The PYGFX rendering engine is based on a Python implementation of WebGPU. It allows you to easily create multiple objects in a single scene. You can manually generate as many objects as you like, add them to the scene, and render the scene to visualize these objects on your screen. Alternatively, you can also render the same objects multiple times using instance drawing, which is faster than drawing each object individually. In WebGPU, Instance drawing is a performance optimization technique that leverages the parallel processing capabilities of GPUs, reduces CPU-GPU communication overhead, and promotes efficient use of GPU resources. This makes it particularly advantageous when rendering multiple instances of similar objects in a scene. Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Sue. You might have noticed that in the examples presented in the previous videos, we rendered only a single object per scene. However, a typical 3D scene usually consists of multiple objects. In this video, I'll illustrate how to render multiple objects in a single scene. There are several ways in the PYGFX rendering engine to create multiple objects. The most obvious approach is to create multiple objects manually, add them to the scene, and render the scene to display these objects on your screen. In some cases, you might want to create the same objects multiple times. Of course, you can create each of them manually and add them to the scene. But a more powerful approach to do this is to use the instance drawing. In WebGPU, Instance drawing is a performance optimization technique that leverages the parallel processing capabilities of GPUs, reduces CPU-GPU communication overhead, and promotes efficient use of GPU resources. This makes it particularly advantageous when rendering multiple instances of similar objects in a scene. Today, we are going to demonstrate how to use both the manual approach and instance drawing to create multiple objects in a single scene. First, we'll manually create multiple objects in a single scene. Let's start by importing relevant modules, including the PYGFX engine, the Python linear algebra module, the math library, and the time module. The math and time modules will be used to animate the object's positions. Next, create an empty scene that will hold various components such as objects, lights, and cameras. The first object we will create is a sphere using this code snippet. Here, we generate the sphere using the sphere geometry and a mesh fong material with an aqua color. The second object is a torus knot, which is created using a torus geometry and a mesh fong material with a red color. The third object is a climb bottle that is generated using a climb bottle geometry and a mesh fong material with a green color. Subsequently, we create a perspective camera by specifying its field of view and aspect ratio and set its position and look at direction. Additionally, we add an ambient light and a directional light to the scene for illuminating environment and objects, respectively. Next, we implement an animate function for rotating and positioning the objects. Within this function, we first define time and rotation variables and then set the positions for the sphere, torus knot, and climb bottle with different time-dependent functions as shown in this code snippet. At the same time, we also set rotation for both the torus knot and climb bottle, but not the sphere because the rotation of sphere around its axis can't be visualized. Finally, we use the GFX show function to render the objects on the screen by assigning the animate function to the before render callback. This shows the result produced by this code. You can use this manual approach to add as many objects to a single scene as you like. In the following, I'll show you how to render the same objects multiple times using instance drawing in the PYGFX engine, which is faster than drawing each object individually. Once again, we need to first import the PYGFX engine and the Python linear algebra module, and then create an empty scene object. Subsequently, we generate a box geometry using the GFX box geometry function and define a mesh fong material with an aqua color. 
Next, we use the geometry and material to create 125 instances of the box object by calling the GFX instance mesh function. We then add this object to the scene. Up to this point, we have created a box object with 125 instances. Now, we need to arrange these instances in a structured manner. It's worth noting that each mesh object in the PYGFX rendering engine exposes its own transform matrix, enabling various transformations like translation, rotation, and scaling for each instance. The following code snippet accomplishes this. Here, we utilize this set matrix at function to define the matrix for the instance at a given index. The index parameter used in the function is a linear index. To understand this visually, consider a 7 by 5 grid as an example, with 7 grid cells along the x direction and 5 along the z direction. Let nx and nz represent the number of unit grids along the x and z directions, respectively. In our example, nx equals 7 and nz equals 5. We label each unit grid with a sequential number starting from 0, 1, 2, etc. This sequential number is the linear index. For any grid cell, let's say the i grid cell, we can use the formula i equals x plus nx times c to calculate its linear index. For the last cell, the index should be 34, considering we have a total of 35 grid cells, and the index starts from 0. In this case, the x and z coordinates for the last grid cell are x equals 6 and z equals 4. Substituting these numbers into the linear index formula, we indeed obtain an index of 34. Using a similar approach, we can easily calculate the linear index for a 3D grid. Here is an example of a 7 by 5 by 4 3D grid. For any grid cell, I, we can use this formula to calculate the linear index. As explained previously, the formula x plus nx times c calculates the linear index within a 2D grid. Multiplying by ny effectively extends the 2D grid into the third dimension along the y-axis. Adding y here provides the height component. For our current example, nx equals 7, ny equals 4, and nz equals 5, along with the coordinates of the grid, i, given by x equals 3, y equals 2, and z equals 4, we can substitute these values into the linear index formula to calculate the linear index, as shown here. This yields 126, signifying that the grid cell at position 3, 2, 4 in the 3D grid will be assigned the linear index 126. With this linear index formula, we can easily arrange any number of instances in an arbitrary 3D grid specified by nx by ny by nz. Now, let's implement this in code. For reuse in different modules, we will create a function in a separate Python file. First, we need to import the Python linear algebra module and then define a function named position objects with arguments nx, ny, nz, spacing, and object. The nx, ny, and nz parameters define the size of the 3D grid, and the spacing parameter represents the distance between instances and the nearest neighbors. The object here is the instance mesh object defined in the PYGFX engine. Within this function, we first define the offsets OX, OY, and OZ, which will be used to set the center of the grid to the origin of 3D coordinate system. Subsequently, we create for loops for the grid along X, Y, and Z directions. Within the for loops, we first create a translation matrix using the values of spacing and offsets and then assign the matrix to the instanced mesh object at the location specified by our linear index formula. This function can be used to arrange instances in 3D space in a structural way as you like. Now back to our instance drawing code. Since we create this helper function in a separate file and folder, we need to import it with this code. Here, we first set the system path and then import our helper module. Now, we can call this position objects function to properly position the 125 instances of the box object in 3D space. The next code snippet is the same as what we used previously, which creates a perspective camera and adds the light sources to the scene. The code for the animate function is also similar to what we used before, 
which simply rotate the object continuously. Finally, we call the GFX show function to render the 125 instances of the box object on the screen. Here is the result generated by this code. This code also allows you to create multiple instances for a different object by simply using a different mesh geometry. For example, if we change this box geometry to the sphere geometry, we'll get 125 instances of the sphere, as shown here. Now, let's discuss a popular 3D model represented by the teapot.stl file. This model has been widely used in OpenGL and WebGL for testing and comparing the capabilities of 3D graphics APIs. The PYGFX rendering engine implements a GFX geometry from TriMesh function that allows you to create a geometry object from a 3D STL model file. We can start by modifying this code directly. First, import the OS module that provides a portable way of using operating system dependent functionality, and then import the TriMesh module that can be used for loading and using triangular meshes with an emphasis on watertight surfaces. Next, load the teapot.stl file and generate corresponding geometry using the GFX geometry from TriMesh function. To visualize the teapot more clearly on the screen, instead of 125, we create 27 instances on a 3x3x3 three by three by three grid. Accordingly, we need to make changes in the position objects function and also position the camera further away from the object. Running this code generates the result as shown on the screen. All right, now is our showcase time. We'll place multiple objects in a single scene under a QMAP environment, as we did previously. This will produce a stunning 3D effect. Since we have extensively utilized a similar QMAP environment in our previous videos, we won't delve into the details of the code here. This showcases 125 instances of a box object. By altering the geometry, material, and QMAP environment, we can create various objects under different skybox environments.